In this video, we're going to be talking about the probing function from inside of Bobcad Cam. Now, probing breaks down into using it for setting up basic parts, setting up fixtures, setting up large complex components, or helping you set up these high volume, high variation manufacturing jobs that you might get, as well as tool settings. So in Bobcad, when you want to add a probing job or a feature, you can right click on the machine setup one, and then right down here we have probing. You can also find that in your drop down up top under additional functions down at the bottom. So when I right click on this and say probing, we have three different probing cycles that we can run. Now those three cycles are a measure cycle, a contact tool setter, and a non-contact tool setter. So the contact tool setter is gonna be using a contact point on the machine that the tool is gonna to go actually physically touch off. The non-contact tool setter uses a laser beam and as your tool rotates through, it interrupts the laser beam from reaching its sensor, and it defines the tool that way. The last strategy is a measure cycle. So we'll come back and look at the measure cycle here in one second, but we're gonna start with just a contact tool setter and a non-contact tool setter. Now, when you go up and choose operations up at the top, you have your options for the contact tool setter or a non-contact tool setter, depending on which one you pick. So you could set up cycles like automatic length, diameter, length and diameter, automatic length, feed up. You could set it for a broken tool, a manual length, manual diameter, and then any thermal compensation. Now in here, you just set up the parameters you'd want, like work offsets, approximate tool lengths, tolerances, what your broken tool flag is gonna be for your machine, your over travel distance, as well as any experience value or length on that tool. So this would be for a contact tool setter. Now, after you have it done, you could say hit OK, and that's going to add a probing feature as a contact tool setter. After we have the contact tool setter, I could go back into probing, and let's say we want to do a non-contact. It's essentially the same thing. You get the same values. You get tool lengths, tool diameters, tool lengths and diameters. You have your cutting edge check, so it could check for broken edges on the tool. You could check for broken tools, either plunging tools or solid tools. You could check the radius profile or the linear profile of your tool, as well as your thermal compensations for the spindle, as well as some radial. And you also have a corner radius measure. So it can actually go in and take all of the measurements for that tool. Same kind of thing. You set up your tool information. And then down here, you have your offset, your tolerance, your code for a broken tool flag, your over travel distance, your spindle speed when you're running it, your experience value, your radial step over, your solid tool numbers, as well as your cutter edge setting. So we'll go into much more detail with this. If you want more right away, you can go into the help system and read all about all of these options. We will be creating a video set specifically covering all of this information as well. Now we're also able to do measurements. So if I hit okay on here, I'm just gonna right click and add one more probing cycle. And this one's gonna be a measure cycle. Now the measure cycle allows us to come in and measure specific points along the part. And we have all different types of measurements that we can take. So we choose our measure cycle. And then the next step is go in and pick your top of your part. So top of feature right there. And then you can set up your rapid plane. This is how high we're gonna clear above the top of feature when we move around. Down here, we have our work offset number. So you can set up a different work offset if you wanted to. And then right here, we're gonna go to operations. Now inside of operations, we have a bunch of different options for what we run. Now starting out, we define the probe itself. What's the ball diameter, what's the length, and then what's the stem diameter. You could also set up a holder and a label. You could give it a tool number or tell it what slot you're in and then what your protected feed rate is. And your protected feed rates are any movements that are happening inside the part that are protected moves. So basically, if I'm inside this pocket moving around, it's going to be a protected move. So you're going to make sure that you have a proper feed rate. Now, after you define the probe, you can then go over to the parameters tab. Now, the parameters tab is where we start selecting geometry to tell Bobcad what we'd like to cut. So we have X single surfaces. We have Y single surfaces and Z single surfaces. Now these work by letting us just pick an edge and then the system will live update and show us what's gonna happen with this feature. So we'll see right now from the top of the part, it's going down 
one and a half inches. And I could actually define how far down I want that to go based on where I'm at right now. So if I say, let's go minus one inch instead of one and a half, we're going to see it's going to move up. So you can actually position this if you had a scenario like so, where you didn't want it to touch this center boss, you could have it just go in and measure the top of the pocket right there. So you have X single surfaces, we have Y single surfaces, and we have Z single surfaces. And then we have the choice of doing, say, a pocket, so it measures the inside of the pocket, or we could do something like a web. So we could go in and pick the outside of two sides, and that's going to give us a web measurement to pick across. We can also measure bosses. So if I just pick the exterior wall of this boss, we can do a four-point boss measurement, or we could do a three-point boss measurement. So you could take three or four points when you take it. We could also do internal shapes. So if I pick the inside of this wall, I could do a bore with four points or a bore with three points and actually define all of that information as well. Now you could define your angles. A lot of these have more options than you initially see, but if you just start changing the values under your parameters, you could actually change how these things are gonna output. We can also do different types of measurements for taking initial stock measurements or running the exterior of the part. So if I go and pick all four sides to this right here, let me get rid of that extra face I got, so delete all. So I can go and pick all four sides. Well, on my way around, we could see we could take external corners. We could actually also take internal corners. So let me delete all that and pick these two inside. So you could take internal corners. But back to the outside, if I go and pick all four sides to this, I can actually do a five-point rectangle external measurement as well. We could also do an internal measurement, which will flip everything to the inside, not the way we'd want to run it right now. So the full list, if I delete everything, is X, Y, Z single surfaces. We have webs and pockets, bosses and bores, internal and external corners. We have five point rectangles for the outside and inside of cuts. We have angled surfaces on an X, Y plane. So that's just gonna be any sort of chamfer that might be on say a corner like this. We also have angled surfaces on an X, Y, Z plane. That would be like a sliced off corner that you wanna go and measure. We could also set up angled webs and angled pockets if your part has that kind of information. Mine doesn't have any angled pockets on it. You could even do bosses. So with this one, a boss on a PCD, I can go and pick all four walls to this. And because they're in a circular pattern, I'm able to get a measurement between all four of those bosses to the outside, as well as a bolt hole pattern. So I can go right here and pick all of these points. I gotta make sure I get all of them because it needs to create a circular pattern and then it can actually go in and measure all of those as well. Now, once again, after you set this up, you have your initial position for your X, Y, and Z. So where you're gonna start and then it's gonna move to all those different positions. You have your Z measure height. So it's what height you're gonna be measuring in Z for that. So again, if I said minus one, Instead of minus one and a half, it's going to shift all these up so they're going down only one inch. If we watch it go from there, I could say minus a half inch now. And we'll see it's going to shift up to kind of the top of the hole there. And then right here we have our first feature angle. Down at the bottom we have our number of features. And that's kind of the parameters. Now this is all going to change depending on what geometry you pick. So I'll just pick something very simple like a pocket measurement. And this gives us a Z height and then the width of the pocket. And then down here, we have an update work offset. So if you were using this measurement to update a tool setting in the machine, you can update the work offset. So it changes work offsets, updates the tool and recuts the part. After we have everything kind of set up here, we can then go to the options tab. Now on the options tab, this is where we get optional information to set up like the experience value, the feedback percentage, the feature tolerance, the true position tolerance, the probe over travel distance, the tool offset, the upper tolerance limit, the null band, and then your print output. The last section of any of these is raw text. Now raw text lets us just output raw text directly into the code. So this is where you could go put in your macros to run specific settings that you wanna run, but this will actually output inside the G code so you can use it. After you have your probing done, when you hit okay, it's gonna store it in here. And then you just have to remember that this has to be placed in the right position when you're running your job. So if you're gonna cut something and then take a measurement, 
you'll have to make sure to go into the machining order and make sure the measure probing is happening after that feature is done so you can take proper measurements. So the machining order is going to be very important when you're doing all of this probing. And that concludes the video on probing from inside of Bobcad Cam.